In this video, we're going to be diving into another new model and getting into my test to see how good is it for creative writing. This is one that a number of you uh, mentioned in the comments of my other videos that you wanted to see me test. And I was actually very pleasantly surprised when I started digging into all of, all of the different prompt results. So the model that we're covering today is Kimi K2 Thinking, which is a newer model that comes from a, it's a Chinese company and it's an advanced open reasoning model that is actually pretty good. So let's dive in. So this is the model here in open router, giving us some information about what it's all about. And uh, there are a lot of interesting things here. First of all, it, let's take a look at price. Now the price that it has up here is a little cheaper than most of the prices that I actually see it down here in, uh, in open router. So theoretically it should have 40 cents per million tokens of input and $1 and 75 for a million tokens of output. But here, realistically, I see it at 47 cents and $2 respectively. So not, that much of a difference, but that's just something to note here. And depending on where you're getting it from in open router, because open router pulls from various different servers, you might even get a little bit more expensive, like $2 and 50 cents. But that said, this is still incredibly cheap. It is not as cheap as another model that I recently reviewed Mistral small creative. Uh, Mistral small creative is 10 cents for input and 30 cents per output, which is insane. Uh, but this is kind of round about the, the same level as Gemini three flash, which is the smaller Gemini three model. Uh, that one goes for 50 cents for input and $3 for output. Uh, but this, all of this pales in comparison to uh, Gemini three pro, which is $2 per input and $12 per output. Uh, and, and Gemini three pro isn't even that expensive of a model as models go. Uh, the Claude models, most of them are more expensive than that, especially Opus. Uh, and yeah, I'd say like the Gemini three pro prices here are pretty standard for like a main hero model, if we're going to call it that. Um, also the context in Kimi K2 thinking is pretty high. Now up here, it'll say 262,000 tokens of context down here. It's different. Um, this one that was a little, that was 47 and two has 131. Um, here it's 262. So uh, again, it depends on like what server you're getting it from, but all in all, that's a pretty decent context. Like I could run pretty much all of my automations with that amount of context. Um, uh, so I'm, I'd be happy with that. Uh, so very, very cheap, affordable model, uh, from moonshot. And let's actually get into some of the results for the prompts that I give it and see how well it does. I'm going to be, uh, naturally probably comparing this a little bit to Mistral small, small creative, which I just recently reviewed as well. So I can't really separate the two in my head. Uh, but hopefully you th will get a good sense of how good this model is. So let's start with the log line prompt where I. Uh, ask it to give me 20 epic epic fantasy log lines in Blake Snyder's style. Let's read through a couple of these. A mathematically gifted farm boy discovers he's the chosen one destined to defeat the Dark Lord, but when he calculates the prophecy is 99% wrong, both sides hunt him to make the math work because his failure is the only thing that actually saves the world. Interesting. I'm not sure that's actually a, a, a feasible story there. When a mind healer is kidnapped by the Dark Lord to cure his nightmares, she discovers his evil is a magical parasite, but curing him will shatter the fragile alliance that only his tyranny holds together, forcing her to choose between his sanity and civilization's survival. Now, I think there's actually a decent story in there. Uh, maybe not exactly like it's listed here, but I could, I could work with that. A financially inept dragon hires a human accountant to manage his horde. All right, so we're getting into like fantasy comedy here, but when she realizes the horde is the kingdom's treasury, she must choose between embezzling for the crown or being eaten only to discover the dragon is the rightful king to pose for being too generous. Now that one's a little scattered and all over the place, but overall, just looking through these, I would say these are slightly better than what I was getting out of Mistral small creative, maybe not quite as good as what I was getting out of Gemini three, uh, but certainly okay. And if you gave it a little bit more, uh, to go on in terms of the, the right tropes you want to hit, for your specific subgenre and all of that, like here, it's definitely going towards 
the the more generic tropes like chosen one dragons and you know dark lords and stuff like that uh if you were to get a little bit more specific with your guidance you might be able to get better stuff out of it um but i would say it's solid not great but solid all right moving on to the outline test prompt where i give it a big long outline template and a story premise and ask it to write a whole a whole outline from it and this one it does okay now because this actually is a reasoning model it does actually set up a number of events that take place later my biggest problem with the mistral small model that i reviewed earlier was that it really felt like each chapter was kind of siloed and didn't pay much attention to what happens in the other chapters. And so it felt very choppy and stilted. Uh, this one is not quite so bad. And this one actually finished the entire thing. I actually went through and, and got through the entire outline. Um, I will say it started by giving lots of information here at the very beginning. Um, and then by the time we got to the bottom you know, these chapters were getting a little bit smaller, as you can tell. Uh, and that's typical of a lot of models. Even Gemini 3 does that. The cloud models do not do that, which is interesting. Um, but overall, a pretty solid outline. Um, it's kind of hard to, to really compare this one. All right, now we get to the basic prose prompt. This is really what interests me the most, is how well does it actually write? So let's go through, it actually wrote a fair amount for this particular scene. Um, so usually I kind of jump to this moment in the scene to, to read it and see just how, how good is it. Scattered figures dotted the ridge he had crested an hour past, their movements wrong in ways that made the eye, re the eye rebel. Two dozen at least, though counting them felt like counting grains of sand in a storm. They moved with that characteristic jerking motion, limbs snapped into place as if pulled by invisible strings, then freezing, then snapping forward again. Their skin, what little showed beneath ragged remnants of clothing, was the color of the wasteland itself, gray as ash and dust, making them nearly indistinguishable from the rocks they navigated with such unnatural precision. They were close. Too close. Varlden's gaze... Gates rose before him now, carved from the mountain's own bones, a hundred feet of iron wood and granite that had never been breached. Haldred's heart hammered against his re ribs as he measured the distance, maybe 300 yards to the gatehouse, another 50 to the portcullis. The math was simple and brutal. Even running as he was, even with the last reserves of strength that desperation had unlocked, the hungry would reach him first. He knew the city's policy had helped enforce it himself in younger days. Standing watch while some of the other soul begged for sanctuary that would not come. When the hungry were within bowshot, the gates did not open, not for anyone, not for any reason, but he had to try. And usually most of the models would stop there. It did go on a little bit further, um, but not in a way where it was like going beyond the story, uh, the beats that I gave it. It definitely stopped at a good pace there. And it added in some details that I thought was really good, um, like, he had helped enforce it himself in younger days, standing watch while some other soul begged for sanctuary. Um, you know, that's, that's a little added detail that kind of fleshes it out, makes it more interesting. Uh, but wasn't in the instructions about how, you know, we don't know anything about his past or anything like that. Um, so I liked that. And overall, I'd say the prose is pretty decent, not a whole lot of AI isms, and definitely pretty good description and all of that. Uh, I thought this was pretty solid, honestly. Right up there, I, I would say almost, this is almost as good, if not just as good, maybe slightly better than Mistral Small Creative, which I reviewed recently. Um, now let's look at the complex prose prompt. It's the same scene, but uh, I added a little more context, like some examples of my writing to, to mimic and stuff like that. Uh, more information about the characters and whatnot. So let's see if it did any better. It did write a shorter amount, which is typical when you give it more context. Um, let's see what it wrote. Sound cut through the wind, not the moaning gust, but something else, something wrong. Haldred looked back. Figures dotted the ridge he had just crossed, two dozen, maybe more. They moved with that sickening jerk stop motion that turned his stomach. The hungry, their gray skin nearly indistinguishable from the rocky terrain they navigated. Too close, far, far too close. Varlund's policy was carved into every citizen's memory. No entry when the hungry were within 500 meters. Quarantine protocols, safety of the many over the few. 
He turned toward the city gates, a uh, desperate calculation burning through his exhaustion. The policy didn't matter. He had to try. I, I almost think I like the first one a little bit better, probably because it spent longer to do it. This does feel like it was following my style a little bit better. I tend to have a lot more of these like smaller sentences in there. So I, um, I do think it did okay uh, at that part of it. Still okay. I think uh, the, the first one was better. But let's move to the dialogue prose template. This is a prompt where I ask it to write a different scene with a with a dialogue aspect to it. So let's go in there and read a little bit about uh, from this scene. Another man died at our gates tonight, Lathan said, his voice cutting through the formal silence. He stopped before the throne, not bowing, never bowing. Uh, I like that little detail right there, never bowing. The second in a month, Father, I watched the hungry take him while your guards held me back. Stor's expression didn't change. The law is a law, son. The law? Lathan laughed, a bitter broken sound. You are the law. You sat on that throne and wrote those words. You could unwrite them with a breath. Your Highness, Ar Argyll interjected his tone, smooth as oiled silk. The laws exist for a reason. Varlden has stood for 300 years because we do not compromise on survival. To open the gates when the hungry are upon us would be to invite them into our very streets. Surely even you can see the wisdom in that. So this is not bad. I do think that when I compare it to Mistral Small Creative, I think Mistral Small actually did better on the dialogue than this one, interestingly enough. Uh, there are a few moments in there that I really do like, like his uh, the, the notion of not bowing, never bowing. That's a good, like, deep point of view moment there uh, that you don't get out of a lot of AI models, stuff like that. So I do like that, uh, and it's certainly not bad. I just think that in comparing it to Mistral Small Creative, the the latter might have done a little bit better. All right. Now for my editing pros prompt, uh, for this I give it a the same scene written by a much more inferior AI model, uh, in this case Claude Two, and ask it to improve it just to see if it can actually, you know, improve on the writing, or is it better to just rewrite the thing? Uh, and this is what we got here. Father, his voice cut through the in incense thick air. We we will speak of the gate. King Stor sat on the obsidian throne, his silhouette a fracture of darkness against the rose window's dying light. He did not lean forward. He did not frown. He simply waited as mountains wait for storms to spend themselves. A man died last night, Lathan said, halting at the dais's edge. Not quickly, not cleanly. He died begging for the mercy we denied him while you watched from the wall. The law held, Stor said. The words fell like stones into a deep well. The law is yours to break. Lathan knuckles were white at his sides. One word, one command, and the gates would have opened. He would have lived. All right, so I don't think this is great. Um, it's it's definitely still an improvement on the original text. Uh, but I thought Mistral Small Creative actually did better at this, and certainly Gemini 3 did better at this. Um, so some improvement, yes, um, but certainly not the most that I would expect especially when compared to some of the other flagship models from other com uh, from other uh, AI companies. All right, let's move on to add headlines to see how well it did at this. Uh, I ask it for 20 Facebook ad headlines. Betrayed in cash from his mountain home, the truth he discovered outside was worse than death. They told him out the outside world was death. They forgot to mention the real danger. Zombies, hive minds, shadow demons, and one lie that doomed a kingdom. What if the monsters outside aren't the ones you should fear? All right, um, I would say none of these are particularly great. Uh, Mistral Small Creative was not great either. Uh, this doesn't really feel any better to me than that one. Uh, a fantasy where the world building is the ministry and the truth is the ultimate revenge. That one's maybe okay, uh, but it's still kind of vague. Uh, not really a good hook. Room for improvement there. I definitely think Gemini 3 did pretty good at this one in comparison. All right, email newsletter prompt. So this is where I give it the description of the book and ask it to write a launch email for it. After months of writing, I'm thrilled to announce that my epic fantasy novel, The Crown of Hunger, releases on December 21st. Betrayed and cast from his mountain home, yada yada, describes the whole thing. Pre-order now. Mark your calendars for December 21st. Best, my name. And that's all it is. And I got to hand it to it. I do like shorter emails. I don't know if... That's necessarily something it was thinking about, um, that shorter is better. But I do think that sometimes shorter is better, especially in emails like this. I'd rather send out more frequent but short emails. So actually, I think this is pretty good. But that said, because it was so short, there wasn't really much much of a chance to really 
show what it, it's capable of, but on the whole, yeah, this is fine. I don't, I don't really have any, any issues with it. All right. Last but not least, we have the SEO article super prompt where I give it a bunch of articles, uh, about how to write a fantasy novel, plus an outline for an article and ask it to write the entire article. And I asked for 4,000 words. It gave me 2,300. So a little bit missing the mark there, but more than what I got out of Mr. Small Creative. Oh, on the whole, just looking through this, it looks like it does an okay job, but it's certainly not fleshing things out as much as I would want it to. It's not quite the like more just like a bulleted outline of what the article should be that I got out of Mr. Small Creative. Um, but it's not particularly great either. So on the whole better, but still not really great compared to others. Uh, right now, the cloud models are my favorite for SEO articles. They do a really good job, even better than Gemini three, which you would expect the Gemini models to do really well at SEO because it's Google after all. Um, but no, I find the cloud cloud models to be quite good for that. Uh, and this definitely doesn't compare to that. So on the whole, my thoughts on Kimi K two thinking. It's, it's a solid model, especially for the price. Uh, even though it's not quite at the level of Mr. Small Creative, it's still significantly cheaper than most of the flagship models. Does it compare in quality to those flagship models? I don't think so. But as a mini model, it, it's probably one of the better ones that you could use for something that requires you know, that, that you want to be very, very cheap. I, I need to do a proper comparison of this versus Gemini three flash, which is priced very similarly, but my gut instinct would suggest that it might even do better than Gemini three flash, uh, for certain tasks. So on the whole, really solid model, definitely one worth doing. We are definitely moving into an age where it's not going to matter so much which model you use because all of them or most of them will actually be decent at doing different things. And it's going to come down a little bit more to your prompts and your, your context. And, uh, in the software world, it's going to come down to how you can use these models in creative and inventive ways to really save people time in a way that actually works. Um, so I, I think this is exciting. I think we're moving into a really exciting age, uh, where, you know, we don't have to fight over which model is the best because they're all going to be good enough, right? And it's going to be more about you and your, what you bring to the table as a human that is going to set the books apart. So those are just my thoughts here on Kimmy K2 thinking is solid model, uh, but not, you know, not quite at the level of a flagship model. Uh, and I hope that was useful for you. I'll see you in the next video.